वेलकम एवरी वन इन दिस सेशन वील टॉक अबाउट सम मिसिलीनियस पॉइंट एंड ऑल्सो ऑर्डियोलॉजी पार्ट सो फर्स्ट द सिस्ट एंड ट्यूमर्स ऑफ जॉ फर्स्ट इज द डेंटीजरस सिस्ट ऑल्सो नोन एज फॉलिकुलर सिस्ट नॉ दिस एनवेलप्स होल और पार्ट ऑफ द क्राउन ऑफ इंटरप्टेड दैट इज अन इरप्टेड परमानेंट टूथ दिस इज अम्पॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यू दैट डेंटीजरस सिस्ट अकर्स इन अन इरप्टेड टूथ the lower third molar that is mandibular third molar is the most commonly tooth involved and the commonest type is central type that is the cyst surrounds the crown and fluid inside the cyst it is cholesterol rich the treatment is enucleation with removal of associated tooth another cyst of the uh, jaw is the dental cyst also known as radicular cyst or periodontal cyst it is a inflammatory cyst which results due to pulp death in the permanent tooth commonest cysting lesion in the jaw it is more common seen in maxilla as compared to the mandible so this is the commonest cysting lesion in the jaw that is dental cyst now because of the cortical thickening egg shell cracking is seen when palpated another cyst is the odontogenic keratocyst it arises from the remnant of the dental lamina now the uh, another tumor is ameloblastoma also known as eaves disease edmentinoma or multicystic disease of jaw it is a most common odontogenic tumor which arises from the remnants of the dental lamina it is benign but locally invasive and on x ray a soap bubble appearance is seen next is neck dissection so there are various levels of the neck nodes and they are level 1a which is the submental level 1b is the submandibular now level 2 3 and 4 they are the upper deep jugular jugloomoid and the lower deep jugular nodes level 5 is the posterior triangle nodes level 6 is the anterior cervical nodes and level 7 they are the mediastinal nodes so these are the level of uh, levels of neck nodes and there are variety of neck dissections different neck dissections the first one is the radical neck dissection now what is radical neck dissection it is the end block removal of lymph nodes from mandible above to the clavicle below and from midline to the anterior border of trapezius now the additional structures which are removed in radical neck dissection they are the submandibular gland the internal jugular vein and the sternocleidomastoid and omohyoid muscle along with spinal accessory nerve and the cervical plexus so this all constitutes the radical neck dissection then what is modified neck dissection they are it is further divided into two three types in type 1 the spinal accessory nerve is preserved in type 2 the spinally spinal accessory nerve along with the internal jugular vein is preserved while in type 3 the all three non lymphatic structures that is spinal accessory nerve internal jugular vein and the sternocleidomastoid muscles they are preserved so they can be asked as mcq what is type 1 2 and 3 modified neck dissection now there is one term known called functional neck dissection it is a preservation of the above three structures that is internal jugular vein the sternocleidomastoid and the spinal accessory nerve now what is selective neck dissection it is a preservation of one or more lymph node groups which are routinely remo removed in the radical neck dissection one more term extended radical neck dissection now all the structures which are removed in the radical neck dissection they are removed plus some additional lymph nodes that is paratracheal mediastinal parapharyngeal or some non lymphatic structures like carotid 10th nerve Twelfth nerve or paraspinal muscles. Now, variety of incisions they are being used in the neck dissections. The most common incision used is the modified Schrodinger's. So you can see here it is a modified Schrodinger incision. Another incision which is used in irradiated neck. It is McPhee incision. There are two parallel incisions in this type. So McPhee incision can be asked as MCQ. It is used in irradiated neck. What is shoulder syndrome? Division of spinal accessory nerve. produces pain in the joint limitation of abduction and drooping of the shoulder it is seen when the spinal accessory nerve it is injured during the neck dissection that is known as shoulder syndrome now next important topic in ent is now lasers it is a very upcoming topic in ent variety of lasers are being used 
so first we will compare the it's a, this table compares vari the various types of lasers which are used in ENT now one is the argon laser of, with a wavelength of uh, around 488 to 514 nanometers ND YIG laser with a wavelength of 1060 nanometers so these points these wavelengths have to be just remembered because the question directly can be asked and CO2 laser has a maximum wavelength of 10600 nanometers now the color of the laser it is also important argon has a blue green light ND YIG and CO2 they are in the infrared range while the KTP laser it has a visible uh, it is it is in the visible range the important point of the argon has and the NDYG laser is that they both can be transmitted by via a flexible endoscope while the CO2 laser is not. The mechanism of action the argon laser it readily transmit it is readily transmitted through clear aqueous tissue absorbed by hemoglobin. So it can be used in hemangiomas, telangiectasis and stapedectomy. The NDYG laser it is absorption is color dependent used in lymphangiomas, squamous cell carcinoma of oropharynx, turbinate hypertrophy or subglottic hemangioma. KTP laser, it is absorbed by hemoglobin. It can be used in stepidectomy, nasal polyps removal and also in sleep apnea. While CO2 laser is a has a variety of uses in ENT, now absorption is independent of the tissue color. It is used in nasal polyps, turbinate hypertrophy, leukoplakia, erythroplakia, recurrent juvenile laryngeal papillomatosis, bilateral vocal cord paralysis for cordectomy or erythroidectomy, laryngocele and acoustic neuroma. So these are the different lasers, their differences and their uses. Now we talk about hearing aids. Each hearing aid has four components that is a microphone, an amplifier, a receiver and a battery. There are a variety of uh, hearing aids available in the market. Now CIC is the completely in the canal, in the canal, in the ear, behind the ear, spectacle type or body worn type. These are the types according to their sizes, the smaller ones being costlier ones. Now Baha, now Baha is based on the principle of bone conduction and osseo integration. This question can be asked, the principle of Baha. It has three parts, it is a titanium fixture, a titanium abutment and a sound processor. The indication of Baha is unilateral conductive hearing loss. Unilateral word is important. Now other upcoming hearing aids, they are the implantable hearing aids which work on the direct drive principle. They transmit mechanical vibrations directly to the ossicular chain. They can be work on the either the piezoelectric mechanism or the electromagnetic mechanism. Some semi-implantable devices, for example, vibrant sound bridge, they are new devices and they are appropriate for the moderate to severe sensory neural hearing loss. Next comes the implants, the cochlear implant. It is for the severe to profound sensory neural hearing loss which is not benefited by the hearing aid. Another implant is the auditory brainstem implant that is ABI. When the eighth nerve is severed in the surgery of vestibular schenoma, so this implant is required. Implant is placed in the lateral recess of fourth ventricle. This is an important question that in ABI, where what is the place of the implant where it is placed? It is the lateral recess of fourth ventricle. Now we come on to the pure tone audiogram. Now the pure tone audiogram, it measures the air conduction and the bone conduction, both in unmasked uh, manner or after masking. Now these are the symbols which you have to remember they are used universally all over the world. For example, if for left ear we are using unmarked ear, so a cross symbol is used. For right ear, a circle. Similarly, for after masking, for left ear we are using a square. For right ear we are using triangle. And similarly, these are the symbols for bone conduction, uh, masked and unmasked. So you have to remember from this table. An arrow is added to the above symbols if there is no response. For example, if in left unmasked uh, ear the air conduction there is no response so after a cross an arrow for example if in left ear the unmasked ear if we are uh, checking for the air conduction and there is no response so after a cross an arrow is put over like this so these are the symbols these have to be remembered these can be asked as mcq one more thing the bone conduction on an audiogram it is depicted by broken lines 
while air conduction it is depicted by continuous line also remember r for r in audiogram red color is used for right ear while blue color is used for left ear it can be asked as mcq now what are the various sounds which can be used for masking they are the white noise the narrow band noise and the complex noise out of these the narrow band noise is most effective for masking now who has classified deafness according to the degree of the intensity after the intensity level so if it if a patient has a 0 to 25 uh, db hearing loss it is normal 26 to 40 is considered as mild deafness 41 to 55 db is moderate 56 to 70 db is severe 71 to 90 db it is very severe deafness while more than 90 decibel it is called profound deafness another term is bkc audiometry now it is not commonly used nowadays but a question can be framed so bkc audiometry it is a self recording audiometer now there are two two tracings one is a continuous and other one is a pulsed tone a special instrument is there to record these so based on these two tracings five interpretations can be made type 1 when the continuous and the pulse tracings overlap which is seen in normal hearing or a conductive hearing loss type 2 the continuous and the pulse tracings overlap but up to 1000 hertz and then the continuous tracing falls this is seen in cochlear type of loss type 3 the continuous tracings falls below the pulse tracings at 100 to 500 hertz even at 40 to 50 decibels now this is seen in retrocochlear loss type 4 the continuous tracings fall below the pulse tracings at frequencies up to 1000 hertz by more than 25 decibels seen in retrocochlear lesion and last type 5 the continuous tracing is above the pulsed one now this is important because this is seen in non organic hearing loss that is in malingerers now another important topic is impedance audiometry as we can see this diagram on the board these are the various curves seen in impedance audiometry these curves are they are known as jergers curve now type a on y axis we have the compliance while on x axis we have the pressure both the positive and the negative pressure now this is the type a curve in white this is a normal that is at zero pressure the compliance is maximum this is the normal impedance curve another curve noted is type as that is reduced compliance at ambient pressure the pressure is normal but at this pressure the compliance is reduced this is type as curve type as curve is seen in otosclerosis fixed malleus syndrome tympanosclerosis or tumor in the middle ear so whenever there is fixity in the conduction of the sound type as curve that is reduced compliance is seen another curve is type ad that is increased compliance at ambient pressure so at zero pressure the compliance is increased now this type of curve it is seen in ossicular discontinuity or post stepidectomy another curve is type b this is type b also known as flat curve or dome shaped curve now there is no change in compliance with the pressure changes whatever is the pressure the compliance does not change much this type of curve is seen in whenever there is fluid in the middle ear or there is tympanic membrane perforation or there is grommet inserted into the tympanic membrane or there is adhesive otitis media so in a secretory otitis media this type of curve is seen now last one is type c that is maximum compliance occurs with negative pressures so the compliance here is maximum but the pressure has shifted to negative maximum compliance at negative pressure this is type c curve it is seen in eustachian tube obstruction early stage of otitis media with effusion and retracted tympanic membrane so these five types and the condition uh, conditions in which they are seen they are frequently asked as mcqs now next is stepidial reflex so the uh, this is the reflex arc of an ipsilateral as well as contralateral stepidial reflex also known as acoustic reflex so in ipsilateral reflex arc it starts from the cranial nerve eighth then comes the ventral cochlear nucleus cranial nerve seventh then the ipsilateral stepidius muscle while in contralateral reflex arc it starts from the cranial nerve eighth goes into the ventral cochlear nucleus 
then to the contralateral medial superior olivary nucleus from then to the contralateral stapedius muscle now we can see that cranial nerve 8th and cranial nerve 7th they are involved in the stapedial reflex the question is asked in which combinations of the nerves are given and they ask which is involved in the stapedial reflex so 7 and 8 are involved so any pathology either of the 7th or the 8th nerve the stapedial reflex will be affected we see the interpretation of the reflex now the presence of the stapedial reflex at lower frequencies it indicates a cochlear lesion as we know because of the recruitment phenomena absence of acoustic reflex with normal hearing indicates facial nerve lesion that is eighth nerve is properly functioning but still the reflex is not coming so there might be some pathology in the seventh nerve that is facial nerve and if ipsilateral reflex is present but contralateral is absent it indicates lesion in the area of the crossed pathway in the brain stem so this stapedial reflex becomes very important to localize the lesion in the reflex arc also sometimes it is used to find the malingers the next important audiological investigation is bera that is brain stem evoked response audiometry now there are various waves which are seen in bera right from wave 1 to wave 7 they originate from the different parts of the auditory pathway the mnemonic to remember is e e coli so wave 1 it starts it originates from the distal part of eighth cranial nerve wave 2 from the proximal part of eighth cranial nerve near the brain stem wave 3 from the cochlear nucleus wave 4 from the superior olivary complex wave 5 from the lateral lemniscus and wave 6 and 7 from the inferior colliculus so wave 1 3 and 5 they are the most stable waves and if wave 1 is present everything rest is absent it indicates retrocochlear lesion because the cochlear nerve is present it is normal but uh, beyond that there is some problem so it is a retrocochlear lesion and increased interoral latency of fifth wave it is an important sign which is seen in retrocochlear lesion so these can be asked as mcqs next is speech audiometry it measures the patient's ability to hear and understand speech so it measures the speech reception threshold or srt it is the lowest in intensity in decibels at which 50% of the spondy words what is spondy words they are the two syllable words with equal stretch on each syllable for example baseball uh, these words they are correctly identified so the lowest intensity at which the 50% of the words are correctly identified this is speech reception threshold and another term is speech discrimination score that is sds it is the percentage of phonetically balanced words what are phonetically balanced words they are the single syllable words for example pin these words are correctly heard by the patient so percentage of the phonetically balanced words heard correctly by the patients it is known as speech discrimination score so speech audi audiometry can be used to differentiate the organic lesion from the functional loss a cochlear lesion from the retrocochlear lesion and also in patients whether to know whether they will be benefited from the hearing by using hearing aid or not another investigation it is the auto acoustic em uh, emissions now auto acoustic emissions they are the sounds which are generated in the outer cochlear hear cells there are two types one is the spontaneous and other are the evoked auto acoustic emissions the evoked auto acoustic emissions are of two types transient and distortion product they are used as screening test of hearing in neonates this is important the question can be asked which is the most appropriate test to be used so auto acoustic emissions now they are absent in cochlear lesions because they are produced from the cochlea but present in retrocochlear pathology another important thing now comes the age old time tested tuning fork test so variety of tuning fork tests are there and variety of tuning fork frequencies are available but the most common frequency we use is 512 megahertz uh, 512 hertz the frequencies the tuning fork which frequency is lesser than 512 they are better felt then heard while the tuning forks which with frequency is higher than 512 they have a less uh, decay time so most appropriate is 512 hertz tuning fork now where uh, various tests are there first is rene test it conducts it uh, uh, checks the air conduction and the bone conduction now if the air conduction is more than the bone conduction it is known as a positive rene test which is seen in normal individuals or in sensory neural hearing loss we can see from this table this is normal this is sensory neural hearing loss 
this is rene positive while rene negative means bone conduction is better than air conduction seen in conductive hearing loss next test is uh, weber now in normal individuals weber is not lateralized while the test is lateralized to the poorer ear in a conductive loss and better ear in sensory neural hearing loss another test is abc that is absolute bone conduction test now in this test the it is a test for conducting the bone conduction now remember when we are conduct and when we are measuring the air conduction then the conductive as well as the cochlear apparatus is being measured while bone conduction it is a measure of the cochlear function only so abc and schwebeck these both are bone conduction test now in abc in normal individual you will be hearing for the same time as that of the examiner while in also conductive the normal will be hearing same as examiner while the abc time will be reduced in sensory neural hearing loss now another test is schwebeck test which is equal in normal lengthened in conductive while shortened in sensory neural hearing loss now hearing loss so average hearing loss seen in different lesions if there is complete obstruction of the ear canal the loss will be around 30 decibels if there is perforation of the tympanic membrane the loss can be anywhere from 10 to 40 decibels depending on the size in the site of the perforation if there is ossicular interruption with intact drum the average loss is around 54 decibels if there is ossicular interruption with perforation average loss is of around 38 decibels so an important point to note here if there is interruption of the ossicles along with the perforation so loss is less as compared to the ossicular interruption with intact drum this is important point if the malleus is fixed loss is around 10 to 25 db while of the closure of oval window loss is around 60 decibels now there are some syndromes which are most commonly seen in pediatric patients a few of them are one is treacher collins syndrome also known as mandibulo facial dysostosis it is an autosomal dominant condition with bilateral conductive loss another syndrome is elbright's syndrome fibrous dysplasia in this there is bony non tender expans expansile jaw swellings another syndrome is sturge weber syndrome in in it there is unilateral facial angiomatosis so these syndromes sometimes they are asked in mcqs uh, fourth one is elpert's syndrome in which cranio synostosis is seen along with mid facial flattening then another disease congenital disease seen in children is the coenal atresia now coenal atresia it can be either bony or membranous bony is very common almost 90% as compared to membranous which is 10% it is also seen in a syndrome which is known as charge syndrome c for coloboma h for heart disease a for coenal atresia r for growth retardation g for genital hypoplasia e for ear deafness so this is a syndrome in which coenal atresia is seen now if there is bilateral coenal atresia the airway is compromised so there is one technique which is known as mcgowan's technique in which an oral airway is placed in the neonate's mouth so that respiration distress does not occur for example a nipple is placed in the mouth that is mcgowan's technique it is uh, frequently asked as mcq and it is for bilateral coenal atresia if the coenal atresia is unilateral then surgery can be postponed but if it is bilateral then immediate the uh, surgery is required in which the bony or the membranous septum which is in the posterior cornea it is to be released by using uh, instruments or laser surgery coenal atresia ct scan is the investigation of choice so with this we conclude this session